All right. Well, we're recording, and I just wanted to say hi to all of you who have joined us for today's Lunch and Learn with the State Library. You have three for the price of one today um, of State Library staffers, and happily, the two people who can speak with expertise and authority about bridges are Becky and Eunice. So happily, they're here, <laughs> and uh, we're glad you're here, so we're ready. All right. Thanks, Bon. As Bonnie said, um, I am Becky Heil, a Southeast District Consultant, and I have with me my partner in crime today, Eunice Reisberg, who is the Northeast District Consultant. And a lot of you probably know Eunice as the name behind the, the bridges. So today what we're going to do is try to give you sort of a brief tour of the uh, consortium that we have put together. So we can go to that next slide. And hopefully, Eunice, you'll be able to figure out when I'm done oh with the end of these and go so I don't say next slide every time. I am going to start the, the afternoon off by talking a little bit about collection development. Then Eunice is going to finish that up and talk about ways that you can promote your downloadables, both for your patrons. Um, and then just in case we do have a few libraries who are listening, who are not members, we're going to give just a, a brief a uh, piece of information on how you actually can become a member. So let's start with collection development. One thing that I want to mention here before we get too far into this session is that Bridges does have a collection development policy. You can find it on the Bridges website, and there is even a request for reconsideration form that a patron can fill out. And the last time we updated that was last August. So we have added and changed a few of things. So now we're going to head into some of the budgeting information. So let's talk about how we actually finance the Bridges Consortium. If you're a member, you already know that we invoice each library each year. Our current per capita cost is 21 cents, but that is going up to 24 cents per person in July. We try to keep that amount as stable as possible, and we're really intentional about letting you know well before budget time what that amount is going to be. The other thing is we assess every member library a flat $300 every year. So you can see from this chart, we take in over $500,000 um, each year. Then the state library contributes the full amount for the magazine subscription, which you can see is at 80,000, as well as the platform fee that we pay directly to OverDrive. So let's think a little bit about how do we spend that money that you guys give us? And that is on our next slide. Um, we divide that $511,000 that we get from the, from the libraries by 12 months, which gives us about $42,000 per month to spend on the collection. Yeah, you heard that right. We spend $42,000 every month on the Bridges collection. This chart shows what we spend that money on. You can see that big orange section there at 46% is the biggest. And that is what we spend for multiple copies. So we purchase one copy of all of the titles that we're going to put in the collection. And then we see the holds start coming. And one of the team members, uh, Misty Gray, goes in and evaluates those and purchases multiple copies. In the collection development policy, we actually have a Note that says we will not buy more than 75 copies of any particular title. But that kind of gives you an idea of how high we actually go when we're buying um, multiple copies. So you can see that's why it eats up a substantial portion of our budget. The next biggest one then is for new books, um, which is the section that I actually uh, manage, and that's 25%. And we have a team of selectors, and I'll talk about them in a little bit. Uh, who actually purchase for us in that. The next section is 21%, and that is our expiring content. If you're not familiar with that, every month a certain number of the items that we've purchased will expire. And we have to make the decision whether or not to purchase that title again if we want to keep it in the collection. We also, and Eunice manages that, and I think she's going to talk about that a little bit later. We also have 7% um, set aside for patron requests. So this, again, is something Eunice will talk about in a little bit. A patron can submit a notify me tag, and that acts as sort of a trigger for us to see that somebody would like to read a particular title. When we have enough requests, we purchase a copy. 
And then we also have a tiny little piece, that 1% in purple there called CPC, which stands for cost per circ. And I'm not going to go into that model, but just know we do set a little bit of money aside for that as well. So let's look at how we actually um, apportion those selector dollars. For the 25% of the pie that's for new materials, we have teams of practicing librarians who purchase for us. Every month we give three librarians a set budget based on this chart right here, and they look at new materials that are coming out, as well as trying to fill gaps with slightly older items. A few years ago, we added an adult fiction standing order plan, which includes about 100 major adult fiction authors. So if you look at that middle column, which lists the percentages, you can see we spend 53% of our total $10,500 budget on regular adult fiction that the selectors choose. And then another 12% is set aside for those major authors as a standing order as they uh, come out. So that adds up to about 65%. So really what that tells you is 65% of our monthly dollars goes to adult fiction. If you kind of follow that column down, 22% then goes to adult nonfiction and 13% goes to youth. That far right column then tells you the amount of dollars that are set aside. So every month, our librarian selectors create two carts of new materials for the category that they're selecting in, which means the person who's purchasing adult nonfiction can spend about $1,500 on audiobooks and about $800 on ebooks. <clears throat> Excuse me, we keep the split the same between ebooks and audiobooks, which is about 6530. So again, you can kind of see that down the middle there. Now I am going to turn it over to Eunice, who is going to finish up the collection development piece. Okay, so then a little bit more into the other ways we spend the money uh, that doesn't go to the, the um, selectors. As Becky mentioned, there's stuff that expires. There are several different license models that we can purchase materials in. One thing is one copy, one user, which is probably most like a uh, print book. It, you buy one copy, you keep it forever. One person can read it at a time. But most of what we buy is limited in some way. They could be limited by time, usually 12 or 24 months. They could limit be limited by the number of checkouts, usually 26 or 52. It can be a combination of both of those things, wherein it's uh, either 52 circulations or 24 months, whichever comes first. There are a few things that are available at a cost per circulation model. There is also a relatively new model that allows 100 simultaneous checkouts for one set fee, which is really nice because it makes a lot of people happy really fast, but it's about three times the cost of what any other model for the same title would be. So we use that judiciously. Um, other books can be for unlimited concurrent use. These are on a subscription and expire after a set time. For example, all the magazines we have are simultaneous use. More often now than before, we'll have a choice of a couple different models for any given book. Um, that is, of course, still set by the publisher and it's whatever terms they want to make available to us. And that choice is great, but it does make things a little more compl complicated. So then to those expiring things, every week I spend time purchasing new licenses for titles that have expired, but still have people waiting to read them. Of late, the budget allows me to keep up with everything that has about four or more patrons waiting. And that, so that is also a piece of the hold situation. On a side note, since most of you are Bridges users already, if you have patrons who are asking about the licensing issue, they don't understand it, Overdrive has a kind of nice infographic you can get from the resources page to help explain that. And that is at resources.overdrive.com slash library. And then there's just the straight holds. We have a budget of $19,320 this year to spend on holds each month. It gets divided between two carts and we make two purchases within the month. There's also a small cost per circ budget of $420 that is used to help bring down wait time for patrons on the titles where it is cost effective. It's not available on a lot of titles and a lot of times it just doesn't make money sense. So we use it 
sparingly. But that does mean that we spend almost $20,000 a month on additional copies for readers. Those patron recommendations are, again, made by patrons placing notify me tags on anything that's not currently in the collection. That can be books that aren't yet released. It could be things that we haven't just haven't bought around, gotten around to buying yet. Or it could be things that have been weeded because the license expired and nobody was waiting for them. But hey, now there's a new TV version or something and people are interested again. As you'd expect, then the patron is notified when the title is added so they can check it out or place a hold. We put a small part of the budget into ordering some of these things every month. You'll see here the results for a uh, search uh, for something that wasn't in the collection at the time. And there's no option to check it out or place it on hold because it wasn't there, but they could place this notify me tag because if they were interested. This part I'm doing now isn't strictly collection development, but it's related and it's fairly new, so I thought I'd cover it a little bit. So searching for things with common titles or words, titles with lots of common words is really difficult. And it really comes up with the notify me tags. So what you're seeing right here, I was looking for um, the not yet at the time released the exchange by Grisham. So that search found 21, 29 similar titles that were already in the collection, but none of them were the books that I wanted. Again, it hadn't been added yet. Below the box for searching within the results, there's an option to deep search. That will expand into things that not, are not in the collection. And that's where you know, you're going to be able to do the notify me tags. Unfortunately, though, with that title, that gave me over 3,700 different results, which was way too many to, to search through one at a time. So instead, I added the word Grisham to the search within the results box and then do the deep search. And that search within the results is also what you would do if this was something in the collection and you didn't want to sort, sort through those original 29. Which then gave me two results, the ebook and the audiobook that I was looking for. So I know this is not the most intuitive process. I've had the conversation with my contacts in Overdrive, and I know that a lot of other Overdrive contacts have brought this up as well. It's gone to the developers. It's on their list of things to work at. Hopefully, they will get on it soon. But in the meantime, this is what we have. And so we need to be able to help our users find their way through it. Can I just uh, say, I, I sure. found this the most difficult thing. To, I've been using Libyan Overdrive for years and years and years and years. And I literally could not puzzle my way through this. So even though this is going a little bit more in detail than what we typically do for the lunch with the state library. I asked Eunice to stick this in because I think your patrons are probably frustrated and you may be frustrated when they say, I can't find this. I know it's coming out. So hopefully this has kind of helped you guys um, get a little bit better understanding of how they can go a little bit deeper in and get that. Right. Um, something that I thought of when you just mentioned that this is coming out just a heads up for you and your patrons when they're looking for something and saying, why don't you have it yet? We don't generally purchase pre-order materials until they're about three weeks out so that they aren't sitting there building holds when nothing can be done. So all those notify me tags get placed. And as soon as it gets close enough, we order the pre-order copy and then people could start placing holds. So if they ask you that, now you know. But to also remember, there is help for users within the Libby app. Make sure your patrons know how to find it and know that you can also search that help on a computer at help.libbyapp.com if you want to look for something for someone and you don't happen to have a device with Libby available at hand. Another good thing that's been popular about the Notify Me tags is that now patrons can effectively use that to subscribe to a magazine. As someone checks out a magazine, Lizzie, Libby offers to put a Notify Me tag on it so then the person can be notified as soon as the new issue is available. So as soon as the next one comes out, they can check it out and 
they'll be good to go. There are a couple of places we encourage everyone to use for help promoting bridges to your patrons. The first is the bridges page on the State Library website. You'll see in the right column multiple versions of the Bridges logo, as well as posters, business cards, and other printable items you can download and use. These are all specific to Bridges. The other place to check before is... You, before you go sure. on, you just want to interrupt really quick here. Just as a reminder, um, some of you may know, some of you may have come in in the, the middle of some of this. Um, we purchased a lot of items like bookmarks and, and business cards and things for every library that signed up for Bridges back in 2015 or whenever it was that, that we did that. As those run out, we are not replacing those for you. Um, you know, we spent the money, had Overdrive make them for us, create them, and we give them to new libraries as they sign up. But as you run out of those marketing materials, um, feel free to use that site that Eunice just showed you to make your own. And, and as this next one shows up, how to customize them. Okay. So then the other places to check Overdrive, they have a large variety of items that, that you can use. They're updated frequently. They different, do different themes, different seasons, all sorts of things. But they aren't specific to bridges. They can be used by any library in an Overdrive contract. Many of them, however, can be personalized to some extent. So you can add your library name. You can add the uh, bridges URL. You can do things uh, to help direct your people where they need to go. And I don't know if we ever ended up with anybody who's not in Bridges. Otherwise, this is a reminder for the people who are. But we enroll new libraries once a year in the spring. Returning members are also required to sign a new letter of agreement each year in the spring. Sorry, state rules. And these agreements then run from July to June. And invoices are available for everybody in July. And in case you're wondering, this is... The, the entire team at State Library that works on all things bridges for you. And that was all I had. Are there any questions? Yeah. Anything that anybody is one? Yeah, Bill, that's for sure. Um, so I can give you a little explanation, not that that really helps <laughs> with the problem, but um, you will see, you know, 120 holds on, on a particular item when you go to, to do it and you multiply that out by everybody can check it out for two weeks and you think, you know, it's going to be a year before I, before I get this um, item, 240 weeks or whatever it is. Um, and so it looks like there's a, a huge list. There's a lot of reasons for that. One is um, there are people like me who will put a hold on the audiobook or the ebook because I don't care which one I get. Um, and so once I get one of them, I get rid of the other one. So, you know, they can take me off that one list. And so if there are other people doing that, you know, this is statewide, there are other people doing that, that list can drop really quickly. We also certainly see patrons who get frustrated and just go out and buy the book. Um, you know, they're, they're looking at, you know, maybe it said when they put their hold that it was going to be two years before they could get the book. So they just went out and bought it um, so that they could have it. Another thing that impacts that, I think, and we haven't talked about this a whole lot, but that is um, for the librarians in the room, you know that you have the option of getting an Advantage account. When you have that Advantage account, you can purchase titles that will go specifically for your patrons. So you might purchase mul a multiple copy of something that we have that goes specifically to your patrons. So you know, Bill, say your librarian looked in, you know, May and said, oh, my gosh, we got, you know, 12 people waiting and it's going to be two years before they can get this book. If I buy a copy, it's going to go to those 12 people right away. And so all of a sudden, when they do an order, you may get a lot of those items that, that they have purchased in um, right away. The nice thing is, and Eunice, you can maybe explain this better than I can. There is now a way that you can um, put your hold on hold. I don't, what do they call that, Eunice? I've forgotten already. You can suspend your hold. Thank so you. That's the word. that if something comes up and you're in the middle of something else and you know you're not going to finish it in time, you suspend your hold. It will just move you slightly down the holds list so that 
you'll get it pretty soon, but not when you don't have time to read it. The other thing I was going to mention, since Bill specifically mentioned audiobooks, was you probably noticed when Becky was talking about the budget that we allocate more, a higher percentage of the budget towards audiobooks because they are, of course, more expensive than ebooks in most cases. And until recently, we had fewer options of licensing models on audiobooks. Um, so it costs a lot more to buy one copy, one user of everything. Now that we're able to get more of more choices there, um, we will try to get the first copy and one copy, one user if we can. And then we can buy metered access copies for those additional ones so that we can make more impact. Um, the other thing related to the advantage copies that uh, Becky mentioned is that then some of our members are generous enough that when their initial rush of their advantage copies has gone down, they share them back to the consortia so they can be checked out by anybody. But then if that library's, one of that library's users ever places a hold, they get bumped up to the, the top of the list. It's called Advantage Plus. And that's one of the reasons where Overdrive is not going to, when you look in Libby and it'll say that you have this on hold, it's not going to give you a very precise estimate of when you're going to get it because there can be a lot of movement in that between um, the consortia acquiring more copies, Advantage libraries acquiring more copies, and Advantage Plus libraries sharing their copies back to everybody else. So it's it's always a guessing game and, and it's a very pleasant surprise sometimes when oh, I thought it was going to be three months yet before I get this, and boom, it's ready for me now, which is when I usually need to suspend a hold because I wasn't planning on it yet. Cool. Other questions from anybody? Please be sure to put it in the chat. Um, we all have that up right now. Otherwise, uh, people who have been in sessions with me before, y'all need to go back to Sam and tell her that not only did I not run over this time, I actually was under where we were supposed <laughs> to be. <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> Yay, right, Christy? Who knows? Well, maybe I'm rubbing off on you. <laughs> right. So we did leave a whole lot of stuff out. Um, so again, if anybody's got any questions. Otherwise, Bon, I think we're done. And we can stop our recording and I I will Bye. yeah, I will just ask if uh whoever has logged in as Ruthven Library, if you can use the chat space to share your first and last name. That way we can make sure you get credit for for your attendance today and we'll take care of of uh, adding the credits to your Iowa Learns accounts. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. I'll make sure to change that up here. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying all these Lunch with the State Library. I've been able to go to a couple of them. Um, and it's really fun hearing what other people are, are doing and what they're working on. I've really enjoyed those. So you will all get a half a credit for attending today. Yes. So thank you for joining us on this rainy, drizzly, well, at least in eastern <laughs> Iowa, icky day. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Becky and Eunice. Appreciate your time. And thanks to all of you for joining us.